Hey everyone, Rob here, and I want to do a quick update on the eruption that's actually been ongoing for a little while now. Uh, we all know factors about eruption. I know yesterday I posted some stuff about the earthquakes that have been going on, and I'll get to that in a minute, but there is some news that came out from House School of Eastlands and the department there that's been studying the eruption. And I just wanted to kind of go over some of this information so that uh, you know everyone's up to date. Now, a new measurement as of October 1st, 2021, of course. So a new measurement of the volume of lava took place on uh, the 30th of September, and they posted results just a couple days ago. The aerial photographs that they took were analyzed and land models have been made according to the measurements, etc., etc. And they're saying that the lava flow is now 150 million cubic meters and the area is 4.85 square kilometers. And they were comparing different maps from the 17th and 30th of September and, and sort of getting all of this data together. Now, according to the measurements of turbulence and visibility to the crater, the eruption was still ongoing on the 18th of September. Some new magma, therefore, appeared over you know a day or so since the first measurement was made. But it, it is uncertain to them how large it actually was. But they're saying it's probably less than around 1 million cubic meters. So after this upswing in the crater, and it sort of stopped on the evening of the 8th, September 18th, and there has been, well, according to them, a thickening of several meters in the southern part of Gelingadalur and down to the front of Natahai. Hai. But they're saying at the same time, the lava in the west of the crater, north of Gelingadalur, has sunk around five to seven meters. And they're saying that the volume of that material that has disappeared from that northern end is as large as the volume that has been added in the southern part and down in Natahai. And therefore, they're saying it's just a shift in the lava. So let's take a look at some of these charts before we get further into the news. We can see here, this is the latest stuff from that they posted uh, and it's latest as of September 30th. And you can see we have a pretty consistent beginning of the eruption in the lava area and then it starts to flatline and we know that this is that start stop area the important thing that i wanted to point out was the lava discharge we can see it's been you know pretty steady it went up a little bit but now they have recorded it at zero and there is no new lava coming out and what they're saying is there's no magma flow from the crater and the flow within the lava over the last 12 days has averaged one meters cubed per second and they're saying that there's certainly molten magma on the move, but only due to the displacement within the lava. And it explains, according to them, that the embers that have occasionally been seen in the lava, is, that's the explanation for it. And the displacements of this kind are apparently known in lava eruptions. So they're saying also that the lava pond west of the crater has existed at least in, since early September and has always had a solidified surface. And then it kind of, you know, stopped around the 15th. Now, looking again at some of this stuff here, we can see that it's tapered off. And this could coincide with some of the earthquakes that we've been seeing. If we jump over to the earthquake section, some of the earthquakes that we're seeing over in the area that's that's sort of close to the to the end of the lava tunnel that they've been saying. Now, we're not 100% sure what's going on yet, but I did want to say, let's take a look at the table and uh, let's do a quick English translation for you. Over the, over the past day or so since I posted yesterday, there have actually been more higher magnitude earthquakes in, in the Ketli area. And I know yesterday I was saying that there was one around 8.30, you can see here on the chart. And it was a depth of 5.6 and it was measured at 3.1. And then today, just after lunch, we had a 3.5 magnitude. If we're looking at all of the earthquakes, we can see that there's been 254 over the last 48 hours. And as of today, which is Sunday, it's, it's a steady flow. And a lot of them are around this killer area. So going back, you know, taking a look at the earthquakes, taking a look at the lava volume, the discharge, and all of the stuff that's been going on, 
one could suggest that perhaps that this lava is shifting and looking for a new area to sort of come out and and erupt perhaps that's why we're not getting the lava flowing in getting and, and everything and the fact was fact that we have seen before so i just wanted to put this out there that there is there is some information this is brand new on on the data here i'll post a link into the description but i wanted to sort of cover this and take a quick look at what's been going on but it is important to note that they have now said and this is again from the university of Eisen, that there is no lava discharge so this is the first time since the eruption started where they have officially stated there's zero lava discharge and i thought that was a very interesting point and i wanted to get that to you guys right away so i will be sure to update you with all things related to the earthquakes that have been going on recently i'm anticipating they are going to continue and uh perhaps increase in strength perhaps also resulting in some sort of eruption but we'll see you never know so until next time thank you so much for watching and i hope you enjoyed it